All right, welcome to October 23rd DevSync for Minecraft. And here we are, uh, halfway through our official sprint. Uh, but uh, the idea here is that hopefully we're wrapping up uh, tail end of work from last sprint. And we've got the new SJ201 boards that we're in the process of bringing up. So uh, hopefully we have better news about that today than uh, a couple days ago. But uh, let's go ahead and find out. Um, so I'll start with Ken. How is it going, Ken? Going good. Got the uh, new hardware working mm -hmm. and uh, just finishing up the integration. I have a bug with the uh, volume I'm chasing down, but other than that, everything's good. And then I'll try to accomplish the animations for the various actions that Derek was kind enough to share with us about an hour ago. But, uh, this, I warn you, these LEDs are not... So right now the LEDs are a little slow. Uh, I'm going to talk to Kevin about um, adding a different uh, command to get around that so we can handle some of these animations better. Uh, I'll code them up with what I have now and we'll see how they are. And uh, I can also put a monkey patch together when, whenever somebody gets one of these devices and they get Mycroft installed and paired, I could send them a file they could run that would apply these changes and get all this stuff working. So rather than having to change the build or the mm -hmm. repository or whatever. So, you know, we can go either way, but yeah, it's coming along. Okay. That sounds great. That's much improved from a couple of days ago. Um, I think the reason that the LEDs are sluggish is that we haven't really designed any firmware for that, uh, for that LED controller. It's uh, it's it's just kind of bit banging them, right? You're just controlling them one at a time, and we could definitely put the animation stuff in that little microcontroller. So. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we could do that. It, it might be taxing it a bit, but we can at least have it be able to accept the LEDs without showing them immediately, and then do a show and show them all, and hopefully that'll be quicker than going over the, you know, the USB bus over I2C. But we'll see. So that's where we're at. Okay. Well, that sounds great. Um, in the interests of, you know, getting things up and working, I, you know, I, I haven't seen the spec that Derek has shared with you on the, uh, the lighting feedback. Um, but, uh, I'm in favor of just, you know, doing something quick and dirty and then we'll work towards the, uh, the fancy version. Um, so, um, yeah. well, that's what I have now. So, yeah. so right now the volume up and volume down buttons will, uh, advance the uh, the circle, you know, from one to ten. The top two are reserved. The last one is uh, currently reflecting the status of the mute mic switch. So if it's on, it's green, and if it's off, it's red. And then there's a blank one. And then there's ten LEDs that I'm using right now. And so the volume up and down, control those, fine. All that works. Okay, great. And uh, you're able to get the barge in and audio in and out and all that kind of stuff going? Well, so, yeah, that's, you just said a mouthful. I haven't looked at barge in yet. Um, i to take some refactoring, but there's other issues I want to resolve. The first is with this board, this version of the Kivi build is uh, complaining. And, and now that I see what it's trying to do, it's, trying to enumerate all the devices and run also on them and failing and throwing exceptions. And then the, there's a, there's two skills. There's the skill Mycroft AI and Mycroft skill Mark II, whatever. And um, the one, the older one, I guess, that was done by Blue Systems is trying to hit the volume itself over the I2C bus and throwing exceptions since I don't have I2C enabled on this device. So I may clean that up too. Uh, but yeah, and then, Bargin I'll get into. Bargin is going to be a little more of a higher level issue because right now the high level code is doing everything it can to kind of thwart that. So I'm going to have to unravel that. So yeah, that, that'll that come. Okay. Uh, but you're um, able to get Michael, audio in and audio uh, out. Yeah, audio in, audio out, volume up and down, uh, LEDs working, uh, switches working. Uh, yeah, all of that. Okay. I just wanted to check when you when you said does barging work? Do you do you just mean can you speak over music? 
no. like as opposed to refactoring like because i know we have different definitions right. of what budget yeah, is that's a so very good question i want to yeah. make sure like that's we're not I doing like that we're not intending yeah. yeah i mean i i think if you are using the xmos just in the default configuration um it will automatically subtract the output from the input on on that side of things yeah i understand that we still have some issues with bargain in terms of if the uh, core itself is outputting you know speech uh it doesn't like to interrupt itself um th to stop talking uh but uh, but that, that's a different issue yeah so i'll test uh that i can play music and um tell it to stop and that works um and it's not clear to me if that's using pocket sphinx or what it's using to do that but uh, the assumption is I haven't changed anything there, so you know that should work. I was getting at barge in over our dialogues, but yeah, exactly. That's, uh, that's, again, that's, that's way downstream. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, all right, thanks for the update. Uh, that's really good news. I just, oops, I just got an update from Kevin um, that um, he can get us. Um, probably up to 20 by Monday. Um, he just shipped out the ones to our, uh, to the fab house that needs to rework them. But the, uh, but the ones that he, the one-sided ones that he has to populate the second side for, uh, he can do as many of those as we need by Monday or Tuesday next week. So I'm gonna ask him to do that. So um, we should have stuff for Derek to assemble. Um, and uh, hopefully that will give us enough to send out to roll over on, uh, you know, maybe by Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. Uh, well, hold on. So there's my guess. So let's be careful there. Let's be careful there because there's, I don't know, you know, what code base rollover has, but they're not going to be able to handle the hardware that I have, right? The hardware I have is jumpered specifically so that everything goes through the USB port now. Uh, and there's no GPIO. Uh, usage whatsoever on on the side of things on the Pi. Uh, Kevin also sent me two other SJ201 boards, <laughs> and they're not wired that way. They're wired to still use the switches going through the GPIO. So make sure you get the right boards to the customer regarding the software support that they have, because unless they have the code that I'm still working on. The, this new board style isn't going to work, right? Yeah. So I, I'm just to be clear, I'm anticipating you getting this code working in the next few days, um, and Derek is going to have to, you know, completely rebuild either new ones or rebuild the old ones, um, you know, with these new boards. So they're not going to get just SJ201s; they'll get whole new units. And they'll get the latest version of the code. Is that the assumption? I mean, yeah, they'll have to, right? So they'll get the new style boards where everything goes over USB. And then my changes to the code that I'm making now, this pull request will have to get pulled into the new image before he builds from there, okay? Right. So there's a little coordination that will have to go on there. I'll try to get this pull request ready to be reviewed by Monday so that we have a half a chance of getting it done rapidly. Okay. Great. Um, so yeah. Um, I still haven't we still haven't done any kind of test of you know one of these things assembled uh, outside of the laser cut enclosure. Um, so you know, we'll, we'll want to have a, a day or two to to see if you know the thing's going to overheat or you know all that stuff. Yeah, and then this board that I have, there's no micro USB connector, so it's like a jumper uh, kind of uh, socket thing and. You know, in a little cable with a board he made, and you know, part of the problem is that pushing the buttons and stuff, it it comes kind of loose, and so sometimes it gets intermittent, and then I have to reseat everything. So it would be better if we had boards for them that had the actual real micro USB connectors and and whatever we're planning on doing along those lines. Okay, that's yeah, good that, feedback. That, the SJ202 board is not going to show up until Tuesday, which we'll do that. The SJ202 will give us that secure connection and make it more solid. But they are coming from uh, jail, PCB, or whatever um, to be delivered Tuesday to Kevin. 
Okay, so, so that's going to be a limitation on getting things out. Um, yeah, I think realistically, what I'm thinking and I, is, you know, I think coordinate cool. with me. Yeah, just coordinate with me when you're when you've got hardware in your hands and you're ready to start. Maybe putting it together and burning an image and testing. Just coordinate with me at that point to make sure that we're on the same page. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I I wouldn't be able to send anything out until a few days after I've received boards, just because you know we need to test and I need time to assemble them. Um, so. <clears throat> All right, who's got all the pies uh, for uh, for the assembly process? Do you have them, or does Kevin have those? No, I've got all the parts. Okay. In the Lawrence office. All right. So it might be best for uh, for him to just plan on shipping them all to you together, the the 202s and the 201s together, uh, and then you can just get to assembling them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, if there's any work you can do ahead of time, um, ahead of getting those boards, I mean, that's that's stuff that we, we should start working on, right? I don't know if there's yeah. speaker enclosures and speakers and jumper wires for the um, for the speaker connectors and junk like that, you know. Yeah, I've started some of that, yeah. <clears throat> okay, great. Okay, um, Derek, you have anything else? Um, as far as updates for us? Uh, well, so yeah, Ken mentioned, uh, I did, I've did. i been working a bit on the LED animations and um, those are not like, uh, you know, they're not inflexible. <laughs> so if there's limitations we wanna work around, um, by all means, but uh, they'll at least let you get started on that. And I do have some things I need to wrap up on. It doesn't, there's a few missing ones. Mute isn't in there, for example, although that's pretty simple. Um, and then I, I was working on a slide deck, Josh requested of me uh, most of this morning. I got some edits to still do on that. Uh, um, I wanna chime in here with, um, I get that, that rendering of the Mark II on the slide deck. Right. Um, the rendering's not bad, but the, um, yeah, it, it's very different from the kind of pill-shaped, curved, super modern design that we originally had. Um, that's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, this is partially to to work with the limitations of of you know how we're doing. It's, it, it just lends itself to a very rectilinear form with the way the Pi docks to it. You know, it's kind of one of these things where, you, you know, I looked at, okay, we can add, make try to make it more curvilinear, but that adds kind of adds unnecessary volume, which, you know, adds cost. So it's kind of a, driven by the, the form of the Pi. And the, okay, when you're here, can we, play with your sketchbook a little bit and see if we can maybe tweak some of the shapes without tweaking any of the internals or anything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and to be honest, where it's at right now too is driven by uh, easy to prototype. And, you know, as we move to um, injection molding, we do have, you know, some opportunities to revisit some of those things. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to get back into a full on discussion of it, but it, it hurts my eyes a little bit. I think we can do better. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, basically just been in, in that world and then also printing some parts uh, and, and getting ready for assembly for next week. The one thing outstanding really is, uh, and I hope to have it done by Monday, is the, the requirements doc. Okay, uh, so I have a question about the dev kits that we're talking about shipping. Um, do you have an idea how much it costs for us to laser cut an enclosure versus how much it costs to 3D print one? I don't, but I could find out. Um, I had actually quoted printing through uh, some of these, like through 3D Hub specifically, mm -hmm. which um, actually 
most of the 3D printing services like Shapeways and stuff, they use you know, pretty high-end SLS or SLA printers. They're pretty expensive. They'd be like close to $200 really to print a whole enclosure. Um, but 3D Hubs uses like uh, Prusas and Ultimakers and stuff like that. Um, and you can get it down maybe to about 40 or 50 bucks for, for a set of parts. I, I would imagine through, you know, Josh has a laser cutter. There's a laser cutter in the Lawrence office. We could cut some ourselves, depending on quantity, but using an outside service, I would imagine that'd be cheaper than, than the 3D printed for one set, but I, I don't know, I haven't quoted it. Okay. It's gonna be, well, the laser is gonna be way cheaper, like way, way, way cheaper than 3D printed. Yeah, I mean, I but, would assume, I would assume. But that. there's there's assembly labor associated with it that's kind of arduous. Uh, well, but even with dev the three, kits, so yeah. They, so, but even with assemble it themselves, perhaps. Yeah, but even <laughs> with the even with the three D printing, like there's a bunch of post processing that takes a lot of elbow grease as well. So, right. um, our three D our SLA printer here in Hulu is not behaving nicely, but I'm working to get it all squared away before you guys get here. Yeah, I owe you a response on that. I'll send you some links. I got with FormLab support, and they're working with me to get it squared away. All right. Okay, let's go over to Chris Vare. Talk about weak words. Yeah, so um, good progress. Um, I will share my screen to show a few couple of things. Okay, uh, this is in my, this is on my machine. I goofed something up about the audio, but what I wanted to show off was that when you, um, when you pick something, it fades out and back in to get the next one. So that's kind of the transition, got the animation done. So you can tell that you're going to a whole new thing to tag. So that's done. Um, and I've been deploying stuff. So if you go to um, precise.microfts.net, log in first, of course. Oh, shoot. So um, you see the card, but you see nothing on it, and that's because I don't have any data set up yet. So the um, everything's deployed, all the codes deployed, all, everything's out there in test. Um, all the databases are done, all that good stuff. Well, all I haven't done is, is figured out a way to put a bunch of data out there, so when you guys use it, you can do a bunch of tagging and a bunch of testing, and not run out of stuff to do. What the thing this does bring up, though, and this would be a question for Derek, is what do we show on this screen when we don't have data to tag? I mean, hopefully this is never a problem, but um, if, if, it, if it is, uh, a blank screen with a skip button is probably not the best solution for, the, <laughs> for that. Uh, An image of a dog that has caught its owner and a, flat, and a little thing that says all caught up. You could use the you could use the dog pulling the diaper down from the old um, like Johnson's baby oil logo, something like that, but something that just says all caught up. You can use a picture of your own dog if you want. <laughs> I like the one that says you've reached the end of the internet. <laughs> so yeah, yeah so I my goal for the week was to get this so you guys can start using it. Um, it by the end of, the, of my work today, it will be. I'm close. I'm just, I need to uh, 
I need to populate some data, like a test directory on the precise server with some um, wake words, uh, samples that we can copy over and I need to um, And really that's it. Once that happens, then those will start showing up on the screen here and you can start tagging them. Um, but uh, so that's just the one task I have left. Unless of course, I, the you know, <laughs> things start showing up and bad things happen because I just deployed it to test for the first time. But <laughs> so far deployment has gone smoothly. Um, took me a little, a little extra time because I haven't deployed Selenium UI stuff in a while. But, and this is all working off of my uh, off of a branch instead of off of the test branch because I'm still waiting on some code reviews, but um, yeah, I'm very close to having this done today. Awesome. Okay. That is great. I look forward to testing it and breaking it. Uh, speaking of which, um, I know that Ken was working on some, some uh, VK tests for this. Uh, have you, uh, are those up and running now? Uh, do they do they work? Do they, you know, do they match up at all? No, I have no VK test for the tagger, just for the upload wake word. Ah, okay. Yeah, he's been busy with the hardware stuff, so. Gotcha. Okay. If yeah, I mean, and if I get this up and test, and he's still busy with the hardware stuff, I could write I can write the test. So. Right. I think we were hoping that he and I could work together and get it done faster, but he's been preoccupied, so I can always, <laughs> I can always have the test myself. Okay. Um, that's great. That's good progress. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, so let's switch over to uh, Gez, get an update on what's going on in the community. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, we've, uh, we've got Lingua Franca version 0.2.3 released. Um, so that's the final version of the 0.2 series uh, before the before the refactor gets merged in. Um, it did end up, uh, we're just going to skip a couple of tests on ver Python version 3.5 because um, that version of Python is DOL'd, like end of life, you know, um, but we technically still support it and um, until 2102. Um, and the, the things are working, it's just in the test environment, they're failing. So rather than spend any time beating a head against a wall for something that's deprecated anyway, um, I just skipped them specifically for the for Python 3.5. Um, uh anyway so hopefully the the point three version comes out pretty soon um we also did an update to PyE, um which is an event emitter library that we use um we ran into some issues um basically race conditions in multi-threaded environments um and uh, thanks to OK, reported that upstream uh got a fix and now there's a new version so um that's gone into adapt and Minecraft core. Uh, we also use it in another um, repo that's, that's less important, but I'll, I'll update it there as well. Um, but, um, but yeah, it's feeling like we've, uh, we've, we've got a lot of big changes in, in dev at the moment. So I think once lingua franca point three comes out, then we should probably do a, a major, not a major release, just a, a release of Microsoft Core um, uh, after, you know, a small period of testing and stuff. Um, I did some work, some more work, just mapping out the enclosure spec a bit more, um, slowly building that out. Um, uh, I had a really good meeting um, with a local uh, team who are looking at a lot of NLP stuff for low resource languages. So there's nothing that's immediately going to come out of that, but, um, but, you know, just good to keep in touch and they're really interested in, in what we're doing. Um, one of the most interesting things that came out of it, I think was that, um, some 
uh, Australian Aboriginal languages, they they don't have spaces between their between their words, so to say. Like a, a single word can contain a whole series of of morphemes or meanings like within that. Um, and so there's then there's a few other languages around the world that do this sort of thing. Um, and that's one of the limitations of some of our um, some of our technologies is that we can't accommodate that. So, you know, our technology will work just fine if you throw, say, Thai in it, which is, you know, a completely different character set, you know, whatever. Um, and, and that seems to be working fine. Um, but, you know, some of these uh, some of these languages that have specific um, grammar differences, um, we don't we don't support. Um, and one of the things that they've built is a way to extract out all those morphemes. Um, uh, so yeah, so the, something that might down the road be useful for us um, when we want to support those languages. Um, uh, found some more bugs, fix some bugs. Um, have been having a chat with um, El Ticino more around the uh, the TTS. George Ann stuff, um, and we want to uh, tweak the Mimic Recording Studio before we get any more recordings done because um, we think that one of the problems is that it's cutting off the a bit too much at the end of the audio. Um, so there's a, a very simple tweak we could do to it, which will probably do enough for now. Um, but we also want to look at some a bigger change uh, at some point. <laughs> Um, and uh, I did I did a fair bit of um, looking at the resource usage on on the different Mark II images as well, um, and uh, just trying to profile that and and really dig into um, what's what's using the memory and and CPU usage and that sort of stuff. Um, so I now have both of my both of my Mark IIs running side by side. Um, yeah, which is good. Uh, anyway, that's that's me, I think. Okay, great. Yeah, the that resource utilization. Um, you know, we've been talking about that, especially in terms of the cute versus Kivi uh, GUI systems. Uh, but you know, we really need to nail down what those resources are for everything. For you know, for the wake word processor, for uh, you know, uh, for Mimic and um, you know, probably for Pedacious as well, uh, although I suspect that's pretty lightweight. So um, yeah, that's one of those things that I really, I, I really want to get to. Maybe it's something we can tackle at the summit. Maybe it's, maybe it's not something we re really need to. But, um, but yeah, we need to have a good, a good high-level picture of of those resources so that we can start to spec the next gen of hardware that will hopefully be, um, you know, a lot more affordable. Yeah. And the biggest the biggest eater at the moment is still precise like um but yeah from what i've heard the 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 tf light um version is is running much lighter so yeah yeah and we can port you know there's there's a four dollar successor chip to the one that we're currently using for the audio echo cancellation that we can almost certainly port uh um you know the wake word into you know, and it'll just that'll run entirely off chip then at that point. But it has to; it does have to be TF light, um, and um, you know. Uh, but that still leaves the other the other bits of it, right? You know, if we if we have a if we require 700 gigabytes of or megabytes of memory <laughs> uh, to run the the GUI system, for example, then you know that might uh, require a different class of processor than. Uh, than is you know strictly necessary, I think. So something it's one of those things we have to keep an eye on and start digging into when we get the time. Um, all right, so uh, Josh, um, you have uh, any updates for us on the uh, updating system? The guys at Panticore built it for us. So, and they're priced right. So that needs to be evaluated. I think it's something that we evaluate closely during the, uh, the sprint that we're doing here in about two weeks. Um, we could probably do some of it ahead of that, being as they already packed it down for us and it's already available. Um, 
and then de develop a workflow and assuming that it works and, and meets our needs. Um, uh, I think that that's a, a good solution. Um, yeah, so I wish I was more technical and built a decision matrix and everything else, but I'm mostly focused on things that work at a reasonable price. Uh, the Panticore hypervisor will allow us to do atomic updates of that, and then we should be able to containerize the skills um, in a way that allows this, each skill to run in its own container, communicate with all the other skills over the message bus, and isolate processor and RAM from each skill to each other skill. Um, that may require a packing process by us, so we've been having some conversations about how how we manage skills in the future and how we share our future success with the broader community and kind of as a hypothesis and this isn't established in stone or written in blood and signed by leadership um, as a hypothesis the concept is that we will peel off a, a chunk of the recurring revenue that we're generating from people who've chosen to be mycroft uh, uh, supporters that we will dish that out to skills developers based on the utility of their skill. So skills that are being used widely and are being engaged with um, by our community will get more than skills that do one thing and are never used or um, have limited utility. Uh, and that, you know, because we have to package this stuff up, because we have to sign it, because we have to take all these additional steps to make it safe, um, that that skills will Skill developers will have a choice of either running, you know, basically in dev mode and provide being provided for free or being part of the, the, the paid skills abstraction. Um, and then finally, we would move everybody over to the paid skills abstraction day one, who's already part of our community, so that um, folks who've already contributed get a year or something worth of time in that in that paid tier at no cost. And so the, there's a lot of things going on with that, but a lot of it relates back to the update process because you know there is going to there are going to be steps and signatures and other things required for us to push these skills out um, and you know as we're seeing with the mark II development cycle you know we our stuff is really complicated and uh, we need to simplify 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 so that my my mom can use it and your grandma can use it so that's gonna that's gonna take some work on our side too anyway that is a long drawn out explanation. And then I am printing things, many things. Okay. Well, that's good progress on the update system. I look forward to uh, uh, being able to uh, bang on that. And yeah, definitely by the time of the end of our sprint, uh, our in-person sprint, we should have that up and running. That would be really great. Um, and uh, yeah, and thanks for the sneak preview on our uh, the future of the skill system as well. So. Um, I don't have much of an update. I've been working, you know, behind the scenes on, on the hardware and uh, getting ready for, uh, uh, the next rev if we need to do one. Um, and, uh, you know, working fundraising and all that good stuff. So, um, so yeah, that's it for me. Um, I think that, um, we haven't gone through the JIRA tickets, um, but uh, let's take a look at those uh, on your own time and we'll, um, we'll do a, a quick uh, sprint review on Monday and decide if we should you know, close out the sprint and start a new one. Um, uh, and then that'll give us a, a full two weeks before the, uh, before the in-person summit, uh, rather than having two more one week periods, so. Um, but other than that, I think that's uh, I think that's it. Any any questions or follow up? Okay, great. Um, well, if we got a little bit of time after this meeting. Josh, do you want to hang out and review this uh, FDM print real quick? Sure, happy uh, to. Anyone else that is interested as well? <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm interested in everything, but I'll leave it to Josh. Okay. Uh, okay, great. All right, well, everybody have a good weekend. 
Yeah, yeah likewise. Chris, have a good weekend, everybody. I think it's uh, actually really good progress this week. Um, although it was a little, little bumpy, um, but things are coming together. So, um, yeah, looking forward to testing out Chris's uh, Wakeward Tiger and uh, getting some hardware into everybody's hands next week. So, I think it's a pretty good week. So, have a good weekend, and I'll uh, talk to you all on Monday. Thank you.